Gray's Pierce was hired to take care of an elderly man in a coma, unaware that he was a wealthy man. One day, while she was taking care of him, the man unexpectedly whispered something in her ear that left her shocked, changing the course of her life forever. Grace Pierce spent most of her life on her grandmother's farm, which became her home. The woman's parents died in a plane crash during a flight to Canada. They worked as geologists for an international company that was exploring promising oil deposits in that region. After her parents' death, her grandmother, Sarah Pierce, took custody of Grace, who was six years old at the time. Despite her advanced age, Sarah managed to get by on her own and was highly regarded by the neighbors. Furthermore, Sarah Pierce knew all kinds of herbs and roots that she used to prepare teas and ointments. It was her grandmother who instilled a love for medicine in her, which ultimately predetermined her destiny. After graduating from high school, the young woman went to nursing school, where she later graduated with honors. At the same time, Grace also received training in therapeutic massage and alternative therapies. My granddaughter is so clever, she seems to have come out of me, Mrs. Pierce used to say proudly. There was definitely truth in the old lady's words, and anyone who knew Grace personally fully agreed with Mrs. Pierce. But when it came time for the young woman to find a job, she seemed to have trouble. First, she realized that there was a lot of work on the farm and that she couldn't leave her grandmother without help. You shouldn't have to stay here with me. You need to start thinking about your own life. After all, mine is almost over, Mrs. Pierce said. Come on, Grandma, you're still young, she always replied whenever the old lady touched on that subject. Thus, Grace's grandmother became her first and only patient. The granddaughter was responsible for giving Mrs. Pierce injections, applying massages to her lower back, and constantly monitoring her blood pressure. Since Mrs. Pierce's farm was far from the city, Grace often had to go downtown to get food for her grandmother. The young woman tried to ensure that they had some extra supplies in case her grandmother got worse and she couldn't go there. It was during one of these trips that she met Leonard Elder. Ironically, the young man was at the same market buying food for his grandfather. The young people bumped into each other at the checkout, causing Grace to drop her money on the ground. Oh, I'm sorry, it's my fault, the young man exclaimed immediately, starting to pick up Grace's coins, which made her blush deeply and lower her eyes in embarrassment. Ten minutes later, they had already bought everything they needed and were sitting on a bench near the little market, laughing out loud. They talked about everything in the world and seemed like longtime friends. Grace had never met anyone so interesting before. Leonard was intelligent and cultured, but more importantly, he didn't have an arrogant air about him. He didn't talk much about himself, but he seemed genuinely interested in Grace. The young woman openly told Leonard that she grew up in the countryside and was raised by her grandmother. Grace always told the truth and didn't see anything shameful about it. However, Leonard didn't tell Grace that he had grown up in a wealthy family and was actually a millionaire's son. His father, Elder, died six months ago in a car accident, and his grandfather had recently fallen off a cliff while mountain climbing with his team. Fortunately, Frank Elder survived, but he had been in a deep coma ever since. It's hard to say why he didn't tell Grace anything. He gave her some evasive answers and invented an alternative life story for himself. Until they said goodbye, he asked to see her again the next day, much to the joy of the young woman, her new friend agreed. 
Since then, the young people began to see each other regularly, which did not go unnoticed by Sarah Pierce. Who are you dating, my daughter? Are you not going to tell me that you're going to the city every day for business, the lady wondered, looking at her granddaughter in the eyes. You're right, I met someone. He seems perfect, exactly the kind of person I've been looking for for so long, Grace replied. Sarah Pierce frowned without reply. Lack of her granddaughter. The old lady was very worried that her granddaughter might repeat her mistakes. Sarah never talked about her past and kept it secret. However, some of the older people in town remembered how rebellious Sarah Pierce was in her youth. Because of this, the old lady was always very cautious about Grace's new friendship and asked her granddaughter to be careful. Grace agreed, but she didn't see anything wrong with their relationship. However, Grace and Leonard had to be apart for a while. The young man needed to deal with his deceased father's business problems. Continuing his lie, he provided a different explanation for an absence. It turns out that after his father's death, Larry Helder, his wife, Jose, took over the company's administration. Today, she had already been working for Larry when his first wife and Leonard's biological mother died in childbirth. Jose had always been a determined and cold woman, which greatly hindered the progress of the business. Young Leonard, on the other hand, was a serene and balanced person, and therefore, his subordinates loved and respected him. Similarly, Leonard's late father was an excellent father. That's why Leonard went to one of the company's branches to solve some problems and try to bring profits back to previous levels. Meanwhile, Sarah was facing a serious health problem, deteriorating her mobility. One day, she simply couldn't get out of bed. She had chest pains and lay in bed for hours. When Grace called an ambulance, she found out that her grandmother was having a heart attack caused by a progressive heart disease. The cardiologist's diagnosis was devastating, her grandmother needed surgery, she needed it as soon as possible, said the cardiothoracic surgeon. But when Grace found out how much the surgery would cost, she panicked. The young woman didn't have much money saved, and her grandmother's pension barely covered daily expenses. And even if she lowered the price and decided to sell the house and land quickly, it could take months to find an interested buyer in that area. Grace realized she needed to find a job and needed to find one quickly. Since then, Sarah Perez's disease has continued to progress rapidly. Unfortunately, all of Grace's attempts to find a job simply ended in failure. The young woman began to feel desperate, but help came from where she least expected it. Still trying to keep her financial prosperity a secret, Leonard decided to find a way to help his friend. The young businessman would pay half of the surgery bill, but the young woman insisted that she would pay the other half herself. This attitude made Leonard admire her even more. That's when the young man had an interesting idea. Although Leonard's grandfather had been discharged from the hospital, he was still in a coma and needed medical assistance 24 hours a day. But finding a permanent caregiver for Frank was surprisingly difficult. Leonard's stepmother was very tough on candidates and they quickly quit. And there was no one to take care of Frankie Helder at that time. He didn't tell Grace that his grandfather was a millionaire, and he didn't need to. When the young woman stopped at the indicated address, her jaw dropped. The tall iron gate and the spacious and impeccably maintained garden made her sure that her new friend's family were not ordinary people. 
Why he never cured me, she still didn't have the answer to that question. But she decided that she was there to work and would focus on that for now. And that's exactly what she did. However, Jose Helder was not at all satisfied with the new person who would work in her house where did you find this girl? Does she know how to take care of an elderly person? The woman said rudely, but Leonard had already made his decision and couldn't change it. The young man never got along well with his stepmother, so he didn't care about her opinion, truly believing that she was wrong about Grace. Leonard was confident that Grace was the right person for his grandfather. Grace considered her first day of work good and didn't see any problem in taking care of the elderly. Her duties included monitoring the patient's condition, changing bed linens, bathing him, and ensuring wound prevention. However, the young woman couldn't help but feel the hostility from Johnsy, the elderly man's daughter-in-law, because she saw an enemy in me. I didn't do anything wrong, Grace thought to herself. The next days in the young woman's life were filled with a lot of work and responsibilities. During the day, Grace took care of Frank Elder, and at night, she went to see her grandmother in the hospital to accelerate the treatment process. Grace agreed for Leonard to pay the first installment of his grandmother's heart surgery. Meanwhile, Frank Elder remained in a coma, and no one could say exactly when the man would wake up or if he would ever leave his current condition. The story told was that, despite being an experienced mountaineer, he had made a serious mistake that led him to fall from a height of about 20 meters. The fact that he survived was a true miracle. However, as the investigation later revealed, his fall was caused by a rope with signs of being torn, which seemed to have been cut by a very sharp blade. Finally, the investigation found no evidence of criminal activity and concluded that Frank's fall was a sad accident. Taking care of the sick elderly, Grace always performed all her duties to the best of her nursing abilities, never saving energy on any of them. Unlike most caregivers, the young woman was not ashamed to take care of the elderly and always talk to him while changing bed linens and checking blood pressure. Grace told Frank Elder about herself, her grandmother, and her childhood on the farm. Of course, no one believed that all that talk would have any improvement for the elderly, except Grace. Leonard believed that his grandfather, Frank Elder, would remain like this for the rest of his days. However, over time, Grace began to notice something strange. Initially, it was the small changes in Frank Elder's body position. For some inexplicable reason, the blanket Grace used to cover the old man ended up, from time to time, in a different position on the elderly man's body. For Grace, it was as if someone were deliberately turning it while she was out of the room. What's going on here? Why is the blanket on the floor now? The windows are closed, so it can't be the wind blowing, she thought. Like any attentive caregiver, the young woman noticed all these subtle changes that were happening to Frank Elder's body. However, the elderly man remained unconscious, which messed with the young woman's head. The more the young woman thought about it, the more she leaned towards thinking that the elderly man was deceiving everyone, including her. One day, the young woman gathered courage and approached him, saying in his ear, Mr. Elder, I know you can hear me. It seems to me that you have regained consciousness for a few days now, but for some reason, you still pretend to be in a coma. If you have a secret or need any kind of help, know that you can trust me. Having finished her monologue, Grace looked attentively at the old man's face. After a few moments, she took a deep breath, 
and the elderly man said to me in a low voice. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to deceive you, my grandson, but I need to tell you something. The truth is, I've been pretending to be in a coma for days. Unfortunately, I have no choice, as I am in danger, just like my family. Grace stared into his eyes, hoping to find some kind of madness or joke, but found nothing, just pure truth. Frank Elder had reasons for his deception, and what he told Grace left her shocked. For a moment, she was even a little offended by Leonard not mentioning his true standard of living, but then she realized the true reasons behind his omission. According to Frank Elder, the mountain accident wasn't an accident, someone had cut his rope. And three months earlier, his only son, Larry, died in a car accident that seemed quite suspicious. But who would want to kill you? Grace asked. I need proof. I wrote a will a long time ago, stating that in the event of my death, Leonard would inherit all my belongings. Now, think about that carefully. Who stands to lose if that happens? That's right, Josielder, Leonard's stepmother and my daughter-in-law, explained the elderly man. It was only then that Grace realized the horrible family she was involved with. During all that time, Leonard was hardly ever home, as he was desperately trying to get the company off the ground. After his stepmother almost ruined things at Frankie Helder's request, Grace kept the change in his condition a secret from everyone. During the day, when it was just the two of them, the young caregiver and the elderly man talked about everything in the world. And when night came, the patient continued to pretend to be in a coma. All this time, both were looking for a way to gather evidence incriminating Jose. The elderly man always heard his daughter-in-law talking on the phone, but could never understand what she was saying. He only knew that she hung up minutes before Grace arrived home. One day, the young woman arrived a little earlier and ended up overhearing Yossi's secret conversation. You have to be patient, he will die soon. And then, I will deal with my stepson, and finally we can live happily ever after, said Yossi. You've been saying that for a long time. The old man has been in a coma for months, what are you waiting for to get rid of him, said the voice on the line. You know he's a Narden, he's located all over the old man's room, there's no way to enter without being recorded, replied the woman. That was proof that Frankie Helder was absolutely right and that his life and family were really in danger. When Yossi noticed the young woman's presence, she immediately stopped talking and pretended to be doing something else. Grace greeted her as if nothing was wrong and began her work. Now she knew that the mature businessman needed to be even more closely watched. The first thing Grace did was call Leonard, who was on a business trip, and told him what she had heard. I think you need to call the police before things get out of control, Grace suggested. Of course, she was right. Especially because the man who spoke to God and was probably her lover. Unfortunately, I don't have evidence to go to the police. Without that, Yossi could sue me, said Leonard. Together, they thought long and hard about what they could do. However, it was his grandfather who suggested an option. Frankie Helder asked his grandson to bring him a voice recorder so that at night he could place the device in the other room and record Yossi, talking to her lover. The next time they spoke on the phone, they put the recorder on. It was an easy task for the elderly man, as Yossi usually dined out every day. But they had to wait three days for the incriminating conversation to finally happen. The result of the recordings was better than they expected. 
they managed to record Yossi explaining how she sabotaged Leonard's father's car and what the plans were to get rid of the young man. All the evidence the police needed to accuse Yossi and her lover of various crimes was in those recordings. At the end of that same day, the police authorities showed up to arrest Yossi. The surprised expression the criminal made upon being awakened almost made Grace and Leonard laugh. It was as if she had seen a ghost, but she was furious. Frank could now return to living a normal life, and he was more than grateful to Grace for her involvement in the case. Frank provided all the money needed to complete Grace's grandmother's recovery as well as a sum for the young woman to return to studying and specialize in caring for the elderly. If you liked the story, please leave a like on the video. And that other video that is appearing on the screen now will probably move you too. Enjoy your session and see you in the next video.